Call the Neil Prenderville Show now. 1850-104-106. Red FM. We all know the big media friendly la- uh, frenzy last year with regards to Westlife. If they ever thought that their popularity had dropped, they got to see that it had not. But this morning they released their new single, Hello My Love, and it's already gone to number one on iTunes. More proof that Westlife are just as popular as ever and are certainly welcome back. Uh, and just a quick call on a very busy day with Keen Egan. Keen, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm good. I was just saying there, I don't know if you heard, if you ever thought that your popularity had waned, it's proof this morning that it has not. Number one on iTunes in the UK and Ireland already this morning. Incredible. Isn't that something? Yeah, incredible. And, you know, it's just, I can't believe it, to be honest with you. You know, we're really taken back by it. I think we all kind of thought, you know, back in 2000, thought that we weren't going to do it again. And then, you know, fast forward seven years and we've two nights in Crow Park sold out, which... You know, that in itself just blew us away. You know, when we were talking about getting back together and we were off of Co Park, we were like, really? Straight into Co Park? And then that sold, you know, within the first few minutes of going on sale. And then by month time, we were the second one sold. And now here we are this morning, you know, releasing the first single um, since since 2011, I think it was, uh, when we released our last single. We came up with straight to number one in the iTunes chart in the UK, Ireland, Philippines, Indonesia. I mean, you know, I'm always just keep talking yeah. about minutes, number one in this country, number one in that country, Northern Europe, everywhere. It's just gone insane. I'm just really, really taken back by it all. It's incredible. Yeah, why, why did you decide to take that hiatus? Why did you guys, had you just kind of run your course or what? Or, you know, do you just decide we have no more to yeah, do? You know, I think we were, I think we were mentally tired. I think we had done it, you know, like, I mean, Westlife started when I was 15, you know. Um, and when I say Westlife, the band that became Westlife, you know, it was 15, I was 15 when we put it together in Spyro. And then, you know, you fast forward kind of two, three years later, we signed a record deal with the majors in the UK. We were touring the UK. So by the time I was 17, you know, I left home. I started traveling the world. And, you know, that was amazing. Um, but we kept going. We, we kept going. I think we were... Let me, let me stop you, boy. Can you just maybe just move around a little bit there, Kian? Because I don't want to abort this, but the, quali- the quality yeah, of the line is... you're losing me. Yeah, that might be a bit better. Yeah. You're losing me. That's better. Right, OK. No, pick it up Pick it up from there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, you know, like, I was 15 when my life started. And I think, you know, when you when you kind of... When you, when you put it all together, by the time we ended back in 2012, we had done 15 years um, of, of Westlife, you know, and it was, it was all we had ever done. We'd never done anything else. We'd never kind of lived a, a normal life at home where, where you'd spend all year, you know, in one house or you'd spend, you know, time with your family and, you know, you wouldn't be missing Christmas. You wouldn't be missing birthdays and weddings and stuff like that. So... I think by the time we got to the end of the run back in 2012, we we were mentally tired. We were physically and mentally tired. And, um, you know, we were kind of at a point as well where where silly things were making us argue, like pointless things. Uh, And that was just because we'd spent so much time together. So I think we all needed to live to learn I learned to live, sorry. Um, There's a downside to fame then. It's a he- it's, it's a, like it's a downside to fame in the sense that it's a heavy burden to carry. You're like you you're travelling all of the time. It's you know, Westlife took you to the four corners of the world, yeah. didn't it? Oh, listen, I mean, the things that we got to do and the places we got to see and the people we got to meet and the life that we got to live was second to none. But, you know, I think it's also a life that you can't live forever. You know, it's just not physically possible. You can't just, you know, and we were also, you know, we were at a point where we were starting to be made feel like, you know, if we stopped, that it was going to disappear for us, that it was all over, you know. So there was a little bit of a push from the record label side and stuff like that to try and keep us going, keep the machine alive, you know. And then and then we started to feel like that. We were like, oh, we can't just let this go, you know. We started putting pressure on ourselves as well. And there was definitely stressful times, you know. Um, and I think, you know, we just needed that... You time know out. what? Yeah. We need to learn to live without this. Yeah, we need time out. And and to be honest, when we got to the point where we broke up, where we were decided to break up, like we never saw this day coming. We were like, right, that's it, lads. We we we've, we've done amazing. We've done fourteen, fifteen years. We've done more than we ever expected. Let's just call it a day. Everybody go off and live their lives. We'll be forever grateful to each other. We'll for, be forever love each other. You know, stuff like that. That was our attitude. So, you know, when you fast forward now to the current day. 
Um, although we thought maybe one day we'll stand on a stage together, we never thought we were going to do it to this scale. I don't think we ever expected to kind of come back and be selling out two nights in Crow Park and having singles go straight to number one. You know, again, we, we I don't I don't know why, but we just didn't think it was real. Yeah, I was you just know? looking. I was just looking at the stats and the numbers before I came on air this morning. You're just, like the only people that sold more than you were Presley and the Beatles, but you sold forty million studio albums. <laughs> 55 million records yeah. overall worldwide. I mean, I won't even go into the amount of, of number ones. Uh, it's like an incredible... Like, would you have ever thought that as young fellas? Well, how did you get together? Like, was did, did Simon oh, Cowell geez. put you together? Did Louis Walsh put you together? How did that work? Oh, no, no, no. Listen, we were born and bred in Sligo. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> myself and Shane met each other when, when, when we were 10, right? And we met each other doing a, a local musical of Greece. You know, the, the, the adults, shall we say, were doing Greece. And myself and Shane were the, were the two young adults, shall we say, were doing Greece. And myself and Shane were the, were the two young tea birds. And we came out in the middle of the show and, and, and did, um, we go together with like two young girls. Uh, one of them now being Shane's wife, um, you know, who's my first cousin. So, you know, and then when we got to secondary school, we met Mark and we started doing school musicals together in school. And then... By the time we were 15, I remember Shane coming up to me um, in school in the canteen going, listen, we're going to put a boy band together for, for the talent show. Are you into it? And I was like, oh, boys, I'm already in the talent show in two rock bands, so I can't join another band, you know? <laughs> I thought I was trying to be cool. Um, and then fast forward another year, and we did Grease, and we were the T-Birds, myself, Mark and Shane, and a few other lads. And then we put, we put a boy band together, and then that boy band slowly turned into Louis Walsh getting involved and he put a support in the Backstreet Boys but he kind of felt like you know two or three of the members weren't right so we were like oh really and he was like look I'll manage you guys but I really I'm sorry but I just don't feel you know that this is the right lineup. Yeah. so we ended up letting one guy go then we had an audition we met Nicky and Brian we ended up letting another guy go then we were back six and then as the time went on Louis was like look lads this isn't going to work you know you're not going to get a record deal. It doesn't work as a six. We need to, we need to figure this lineup out, and we let another guy go. So it ended up being the three lads from Sligo, myself, Shane, and Mark, and uh, the two Dublin boys. And straight away, as soon as we started auditioning as a band, then you know we were getting offers from all the record labels in the UK to sign us. Louis obviously was having huge success with Boyzone. Yes. And boom, it just started from there. It just snowballed. actually, it's very interesting because Westlife fans get very annoyed anytime anybody brings up Brian McFadden or the possibility of him coming back or anything because he's been out of the no, band more no. years than he's been in, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Like I mean, Brian left after I think it was five years. Brian left, and then we continued on for uh, nine years without him as as Westlife. And then obviously, you, then you have the seven year break in the middle then between now and coming back. So. You know, there's a lot of love for Brian. We we love Brian. We we you know appreciated the time that Brian gave us, um, and I think the big thing that we always try and you know without getting into it too much, but we always try and remind people he left. Yeah. You know, he he walked out and and left, and um, you know we picked up the pieces and continued as a band for a very 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 long time. Did you consider at the time maybe not continuing on? Was it? You know, sorry, I know there's a delay here, but was it a brave move to decide to carry on to even more success subsequently? I know. Well, well, we were very nervous at the time. We thought it was done. We were like, oh my god, you know, look at all the bands that come before us: Spice Girls, Take That. You know, as soon as one member left, it was over. You know, and. Lads, it's over, it's over, like he's left. You know, we're, we're done, we're done. Um, and, you know, the timing of things, in a way, kind of helped us a huge amount because we'd already sold the tour out that we were about to do. And the tour was sold as the five piece, you know. People were coming to see Westlife with yeah. the five. Yeah. Um, and about, about four weeks before the tour started, that's when he said, I'm leaving. So, you know, we kind of got on to management and to our agents and stuff like that, and we were like, can we do this tour as a four? And they were like, well, yeah, you can. So we went out, and I think the first night we played was up in Belfast, and the first night we played as a four and went out and played that gig, that was the night we knew this is okay. This, this is, is okay. Four. You know, the Must reaction been, was yeah. 
it was almost like it was almost like the reaction was bigger because the fans had gone, you know, okay, he's left, but thank you, you're still here. Yeah. You know, the song sounded the same, the music was, you know, everything was still there. They were still getting their Wi-Fi. So, yeah. I, you I know, s- I we see. reassured the fans and the fans reassured us. I you know, see similarities now at the moment with Fleetwood Mac and uh, all of the argy bargies. Lindsay Buckingham is out. They bring in Mick Finn and all sorts of different people. Like you know, uh, they bring in extra stars to take his place. And a lot of people. I'm going to, I'm going to Fleetwood Mac um, later in the year, and I'm just wondering what it will be like. You know, I'm slightly perturbed about it to be honest with you. But yeah, yeah. that happens, I suppose, doesn't it? I, I, and at the same time, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a buzz behind that too, because you're kind of like, oh, what's it going to be like? Is it going to be good? Is it going to yeah, be bad? Yeah, and yeah. if it's good you're going to come out of that gig going, oh, thanks be to God, it was amazing, you know, and you'll, you'll be the biggest fan in the world again. Yeah, I, I won't keep you much longer because I know you're doing a lot of media, but for a lot of people who are listening no to us now, and you're, you're talking about what you did through school and, the, you know, all of the mates that you were with and the boy bands you set up and the different bands, what advice would you give to young people who have talent? There are more opportunities now because of social media to air their abilities. But what oh. kind of advice do you give? Do you, or do you just think you were just damn lucky, talented, but you had luck on your side? Uh, look, you know, it's a tough one. When I look at the music industry now and I look at how young bands come through and stuff like that, I always I always remain with one thing. If the songs and the talent is there, it will get through. You know, Ed Sheeran is where he is because he has the talent to be where he is. You know, Adele, people like this, you know, Beyonce, all these people, you know, they're there because of the music. They're there because of the songs that they've written. They're worldwide songs, you know, and if it's something that's in your blood and in your passion and it's all you want to do, then that's what you should do. You know, there's lots of different ways of making careers out of music. You don't necessarily have to be playing Crow Park. Of course, that's the dream. Yeah. But, you know, if you want to make a living from music, you can, you know, I know people I know people in the West Coast of Ireland who, who want to make a living from music, but they don't want to leave the West Coast of Ireland to do it. They want to play in pubs so they can surf all day. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they, they, and, and they can provide for their families that way and stuff like that. They want, you know, they want a certain lifestyle and because they're talented enough and because they have the abilities, they have the abilities to do to live that lifestyle. So, you know, I think it all depends on what it is you're looking for. But I, I genuinely say to people, look, if you have the talent and you really want to do it, there's all different types of careers out there. It doesn't have to be at the massive, massive, massive level. You know, it can be at a middling level. It can be at a lower level. It's just, as long as you get to do what you love to do in life and make a career out of it, then aren't you a lucky person in the you world? You better believe it. People have to get up every day. And, and go to work to a job that they hate, you know. Um, so I, I just always, and that would be the advice I'd give my own kids. It's like, look, as long as you love your job, you're going to be happy in life. Now, the 20 Tour is your fastest selling tour of all time. You sold out 400,000 tickets in just under two days, which is incredible. And of course, we've got a couple of those gigs in, in Croke Park, and I'm delighted to say I have some tickets to give away for that in a minute. But just on the single, did you work oh, with it? Did you work with Ed Sheeran on this? Uh, is he a mate of yours? Do you guys hang out? No, no. Like, it's so weird because, you know, we started the conversations about the West Life kind of re- reuniting there last year. Um, the first meeting that we had was in Nikki's house around Easter time last year. And, um, you know, we, we all sat around the table and talked about it. We had no idea on the timeline. We weren't going, OK, yeah, for 2019 or 2020, you know. There was, there was all different types of talk. Um, but then we started going, OK, well, look, you know, let's, let's get everybody that we want to work with us back in play. So we started getting management back in play and we had a meeting with, our, with one of our managers in London and um, this is this is a guy who works with Louis Walsh now and, you know, we were, we're in his house in London and he goes, oh, by the way, I was down with Steve Mack yesterday. And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And now Steve Mack wrote Flying Without Wings, Swear It Again, World of Our Own. And he says, and I was telling him about you boys getting back together and he goes, well, why you should say that let me play you a song. Wow. And um, um, our manager, Sonny, was like, okay, okay. And he played um, two songs to our manager. And he goes, I wrote these with Ed Sheeran. And, and you know, they just had um, Shape of You as a hit together. And obviously Shape of You is the, the most streamed song of all time on, on Spotify and all this type of stuff. So, so the story continues anyway. So he plays us these songs and he goes, yeah. Ed Sheeran came into me and says, well, now I'm working with Mr. Westlife. I want to write some Westlife songs. And, you know, he was like, but Westlife aren't together. And he goes, I don't care. I want to write Westlife songs. Let's write some classic Westlife songs. 
So they went off and they wrote one or two classics, as in like big power ballads. And he was like, right, let's write a world of our own. Let's write a big up tempo. Let's, you know, let's keep this Westlife buzz going. And they wrote three or four songs. And uh, Hello, My Love was one of them songs. And Hello, My Love is the first single. And, um, you know, we recorded the other ones. Um, with the, the big power ballad. There's talk about that as being our second single. Uh, so, you know, just, it's it's just, Another one of these things, another one of these pieces of the puzzle that just managed to come together that, you know, out of nowhere, you know, we're sitting in a room talking about a Westlife reunion and then we're being told yeah, to yeah. back in a chair and it's written some songs for us. We're like, what? I want to you know, give it, like, I want to give it a spin, all but these things. just fell into place. But yeah. I'm, I'm terribly nosy. Last question, because this is just a nosy list. Yeah, I, you got to wrap up. Who instigated the get together meeting to put Westlife back on the road again? Well, it started with it started with myself and Shane. We yeah, but dinner, which uh, which one have you brought up the topic? Do you know? Uh, do you know what? We were quite a few drinks in by the time it got brought up. <laughs> we were both we probably both went we probably both went to the dinner with the idea of let's talk about Westlife. But I love as, it. as the kind of as the drinks started flowing, I love we it. kind of probably our our. Um, What's the word? Our confidence, our, 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 you know, want to talk about it just came out. And, and I'm so glad that it did. I'm and glad. I'm glad. That was it, yeah. And you're rightfully yeah. back as the kings of pop. Let's give it a spin, Key, and I've stayed way too long on my conversation with you, and I thank you for that. So congratulations. Well done. Welcome not back. Not at all, not at all. Mind yourself, kid. Thanks so much. Hello, Thank my love from now. Westlife. No one knows about the things that I've been through with you. There were times I drive you near.